All right, guys, so just a quick update for you. Um, I'm actually going to be taking this apart. Uh, I'm going to be doing some minor upgrades to it, some modifications. So I just want to show you kind of how it works real quick before I completely dismantle this. Uh, so the rails are here. Um, and let me grab the capacitors real quick just so you can see. Um, both of these systems have been uh, taken off. So the capacitors are here. This normally slides along this bottom rail here. It just slides in, um, and then these guys, uh, which are the uh, capacitor connectors, would connect into the rail ports here. So, yeah, here's the rails, and as again, uh, this just slides port there. Um, and then there's some pins that hold it in place. The tank, this guy, is right here. Um, there's actually a large air tank inside of there. Um, electronics are here. This is actually the charging cable. This charges up the capacitor bank. Uh, this is double wrapped in Teflon. So safe, very safe stuff. Uh, this is the thing that was actually hidden under the uh, kind of bellows looking thing. This is the main airline. This transports uh, a thousand PSI. Uh, so this is actually the high pressure line. This is coming directly from the bottle. Uh, the low pressure line is contained in here. And I can take that apart shortly. Actually, I will take that apart shortly. And then this is the uh, the line that goes to the rails. This is also a thousand psi, but this is a thousand psi and a lot of flow. So this is a high flow, thousand psi rated line. This is a low flow, thousand flow, uh, thousand psi rated line. And then the regulator down here, you can adjust that. Um, although I think I'm going to get rid of the regulator because there's no reason to have this kind of a ridiculous regulator setup. Um, just adds weight and complexity and, um, yeah, give me a sec. So the first step in disassembling the railgun is to remove this piece of structural, uh, FRP. This is just a piece of Gerolite, uh, that holds the two halves of this section together. And I removed that so you can see the regulator here now. Uh, this is an adjustable 100 PSI regulator. So this is actually the mechanism, the trigger mechanism with the cover removed. So inside of here you can see the low pressure line that goes along here. There's a five-way switching valve with a rod that goes to the trigger. So when the trigger is depressed, the rod moves down and switches this five-way valve. Uh, that uh, routes high pressure air to the air actuated ball valve up there. And here it is with the, uh, the CO2 tank port removed. Um, that was kind of just for decoration. Here you can see these compression fittings. Uh, I wasn't entirely impressed with these compression fittings, even though apparently they can they can handle a thousand psi. They don't handle it well. There was a lot of leaks. Um, they were cheap, which is why I went with them. But they they really weren't equipped uh, to handle this kind of a, an application. So I don't think I'm going to be using these compression fittings anymore. They're not very good. Um, yeah, guys, here's the core of the gun. Uh, we have just the electronic component here, and the air tank, which is here. Um, so here we go, guys, the final pieces of the puzzle. The whole thing is dismantled now. Um, so this is the trigger assembly. Uh, it's very simple. There's just a trigger here, and a spring. Very simple. goes on there. When the trigger is depressed, there's a wedge that pushes that rod down, which depresses the valve. That's it for the trigger assembly. The electronics component, it's just one big brick of electronics that I'm going to have to mess with. Um, that's the entire railgun disassembled. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching.